This is lesson 7.6, factoring trinomials. You should be on page 392. Now you might be thinking, we just learned how to factor trinomials in the last lesson. You did. And we're going to work on those again today, but we're going to concentrate on factoring trinomials when the lead coefficient is something other than 1. You just finished a quiz today where you were factoring trinomials where the lead coefficient was always 1. Well, again, lead coefficient is this number here. We're going to work on how to factor these when this number is not 1. You're then going to use the techniques you learned in this lesson to solve real life problems. So let's talk about how to factor trinomial when this lead coefficient is a number something other than 1. You learned in the last lesson how to factor these when a was 1. To factor polynomials of this form where a is something other than 1, the first thing you should do is look for the greatest common factor and try to factor that out. So if you're like, what do you mean by that? The greatest common factor is a number or variable that I can pull out of every term. Okay? Let's look at example one. This would be a good example. Here is a trinomial where the lead coefficient, you can see it's five, it's not one. So the first thing you should do is right here. We should try to factor out a common factor. Well, let's look at this carefully. Look at these three terms. Now, each term I highlighted in a different color. Now, each term does not have a variable. Like this has x, this has x, this doesn't have any. But look at the numbers. The yellow term has 5, the pink term has 15, and the green term has 10. I can definitely divide all these terms by 5. So let's factor out a 5. If I divide by 5, let me write my variables in here real quick. I'll leave a little space. Okay, so if I divide everything by 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so this would be 1. I'm not going to write it in. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. I just factored out the 5. Now look at what I have here. This is exactly what you took a quiz on. Now that the lead coefficient is 1, I should be able to think, what times what's 2 and adds up to 3? Well, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So to factor this, I would have 5 outside, and then x plus 1, and x plus 2, and there would be the correct factoring for this, just like you see here. Okay? Now, sometimes, if you look down at the next portion, example 2 of the book, sometimes you'll notice there is no common factor. Like when I highlight these terms, 4x squared, 13x, and 3, there are no common factors. So what am I going to do? Now, the book shows an old school trial and method, trial and error, I should say, method of factoring these. I am going to show you something else which eliminates much, much of the trial and error. Now, a couple of things you've got to be aware of here. I don't know what the name of this is. I had a student show me this several years ago. They went to Sylvan Institute, which is like paid tutoring, and this student came back to school and asked me for help on this, and this student was showing me this method, and I'm like, where in the heck did you learn this from? I've never seen it before. And they said Sylvan, and I checked it out. It actually works. So the student's name was Brooklyn, so I call it the Brooklyn method. Okay? Now, your parents, if you show them this, your parents and I were taught this method, the old school method that the book shows. Mom and dad and I were all taught the old school method. So if you show this to your parents, I, I'm telling you right now, your parents will be like, I've never seen this before. Let your parents know if they're concerned about that. Watch this next five minutes of the video, and I think your mom and dad would agree that what I'm showing you is going to be better than what you, your mom and dad and I were taught. We had to do this by mental math trial and error. Okay, that's the only way we can get it done. What I'm going to show you, I think, is more efficient than the mental math trial and error. We'll call it, for no other name, we'll call it the Brooklyn method. So how does this Brooklyn method work? It's 
five quick steps. Here's the trinomial. The first step is to take A times C and now make that your new C value. So you're going to take A and multiply it with C. Now when you do that, you would now make A1. So you'll, you'll have the kind of trinomial we just took a quiz on. Next, since we multiplied A in step one, we now have to divide each factor by A, reduce each fraction, and tuck any denominator in front of the binomial. And you're probably like, those directions don't make any sense. Let me walk through these directions, and this is a good thing. Again, if mom and dad are watching, this is great because it will show them exactly why we're doing this. It eliminates all the mental math options that mom and dad and I had to work through when we were your age, okay? So, you notice there's no common factor here. You always check for a common factor first. There isn't any. Take A times C. A is 4 and C is 3, so 4 times 3 is 12. So rewrite this as x squared plus 13x plus 12. Now, do you notice this is exactly like what you took a quiz on today? So now, the nice thing about this new method is we're just getting to really be good at lesson 7-5. So what times what's 12 and adds it to 13? So in my head, I'm thinking here, well, isn't 12 times 1 12 and 12 plus 1 13? Okay, so x plus 12 and x plus 1. Okay, now, step 3. Since we multiplied by 4 in the beginning of the problem, I now have to divide each of these factors I created by 4 and reduce each fraction. This is super important. Can I reduce 12 over 4? Well, yeah, 12 divided by 4 is 3. Can I reduce 1 over 4? Uh, no, 1 divided by 4 I cannot reduce. So take this 4 and tuck it in front and you get x plus 3 times 4x plus 1. Now look at what the book has for the same thing. They have x plus 3 and 4x plus 1, and we avoided all this mental math uh, possibility, trial and error stuff that mom and dad and I had to do at your age. Let's do this one also. 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. So 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. So do I have a common factor? You always want to check that first. Does this term, this term, or this term have a common factor that I can pull out? And uh, I don't see any no. So step one, take a times c. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay. What times what is 6 and adds up? to negative 7. Well, negative 6 times negative 1 would give me positive 6. Negative 6 plus negative 1 would get me negative 7. So my factors are negative 6, negative 1. Next, since I multiplied by 3, we're on step 3 right now. Since we multiplied by 3, we got to divide each of these by 3, and now we want to reduce each fraction. 6 over 3 is 2. 1 over 3 doesn't re reduce, so take the 3 and tuck it in front, and you'll notice that is exactly what the book has right there. Okay, so this method works great and eliminates all the mental math trial and error. So let's do this one. Okay, do I have a common factor? I'm just highlighting again, do any of these have a common factor? And no, I don't have any common factor I can pull out. So let's do the five steps. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. What times what's negative 14 and adds up to negative 5? Well, I'm thinking, um, what about negative 7 and positive 2? Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14, and negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. So there's my factors, negative 7 and 2. Okay, next step. Since I multiplied by 2 in the beginning, I now have to divide by 2, and I have to reduce each fraction. 7 over 2 doesn't reduce, so take the 2 and tuck it in front. That's 2x minus 7. 2 over 2 is 1, 
that's x plus 1, and you can see I have the same answer they do. Now, I have it in a different order. It doesn't matter. 2x minus 7 times x plus 1 is the same as what they have here, just in a different order. Now, we must be careful when we use this method or we're factoring trinomials where a is not 1. If a is negative, we cannot have that. We got to get rid of that negative in front. You must factor it out. So I would definitely get this in your notes for sure. We can never let A be negative when we try to factor. So when you look at this sample problem, let's see, do I have a common factor? Well, there's a couple issues here. I do definitely don't want that A value to be negative. Now, other than that, there's no common factors. Not all the terms have x, and 4, 8, and 5 don't have a common factor. So I'm going to factor out the negative 1. So if I divide out the negative 1, I would get a positive 4x squared, I'd get a positive 8x, and I'd get a negative 5. Okay, now I can use the Brooklyn method. I have five steps. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So I have negative 1 in front and x squared plus 8x minus 20. Okay, now I'm trying to think what times what's negative 20 but adds up to negative or positive 8. Uh, what about 10 and negative 2? Isn't 10 times negative 2 negative 20 but 10 plus negative 2 neg uh, positive 8? Okay, 10 and negative 2 are my factors. So I have a negative 1 in front. I got x plus 10 x minus 2. Now we can't forget we multiplied by 4 in the beginning, so now we must divide by 4, and now here's the important part. You've got to reduce each fraction. Remember, you can use your math key on your calculator to do that. 10 over 4 reduces to 5 over 2. So take the 2 and tuck it in front, 2x plus 5, and 2 over 4 is a half. So take the 2 and tuck it in front. I have 2x minus 1. And if I move this down, here's my answer. And let's compare that to what the book has. And you notice they have the same answer. Now they put the 2x minus 1 in front and the 2x plus 5 after, but they got the same answer I do. So the Brooklyn method works great because look at all this mental math that your parents and I would have had to work through to get to the same response, okay? So again, if mom and dad watch this, I think they might agree with me after that old school method we were taught that this is actually going to make things easier on you. What I would like you to do is pause the video right now, and you can try the odd questions, one, three, five, seven, nine. Pause and do that. And you should be getting the following answers. I highlighted them. Um, Question 1, question 3, 5, 7, and 9. I showed a little work with it. If you are not getting to these and you're not understanding how, make sure when we have question and answer to start class tomorrow that you are speaking up so we can talk about these and work through them so you can see how. Now that we know how to use the Brooklyn method, we can solve real life problems. And as you look, I'm not going to do it the old school way, but look at all the mental math that old school way we would have had to do. Okay? Um, the length of a rectangular game reserve is one mile longer than twice the width. Now, I don't know the width at all, so I'll call that W. I do know a little something about the length. It's one mile longer. That means one more than twice the width. The area is 55, so isn't length times width area? So length times width would equal 55. Length is 2w plus 1, so I'll put a 2w plus 1 in for the length. Let me distribute, so 2w squared plus 1w equals 55. To solve this, I need to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. So let's do that. 2w squared plus 1w minus 55 equals 0. Okay, now I want to solve this. My trinomial has a lead coefficient other than 1, so let's quickly check. 
do any of these terms have a common factor that I can pull out and it doesn't look like it. So I got to use the Brooklyn method. 2 times 55 is negative 110. And what times what's negative 110 but adds up to 1? Well, right off the bat, off the top of my head, I'm thinking, what about 11 times negative 10? Isn't 11 times negative 10 negative 110? And isn't 11 plus negative 10 1? Well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. There's my C and there's my B. So I have W plus 11 and W minus 10. Now, we multiplied by 2 in the beginning, so we must divide by 2 and then reduce each fraction. 11 over 2 won't reduce. 10 over 2 is 5. And now we got to solve, okay? So to solve it, I need 2w plus 11 to equal 0. I'll write that up here. Okay, let's solve that. Subtract 11. 2w would equal negative 11 and divide by 2. W would equal negative 5.5. Now let's think about that. Is it real to have a width that's negative 5.5? And I hope you're coming up with no. Well, that means this is a mathematically correct answer, but it's not real. So we're going to throw that one out. It's not a real answer. Let's check over here. W minus 5 has to equal 0, so that means my second answer could be W equals 5. Well, that's real. My width could be 5. Let's check then. If my width equals 5, that m means my length would be 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 1, which is 11, is 5 times 11, 55. And yeah, it is, so there's my width. My width would have to be 5 miles. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in class.